In addition to parallel and series connected structures, we will encounter two other common ways of connecting devices. In this video, we're going to discuss the delta and y connections of devices. Three resistors that are connected end to end in a type of daisy chain loop are said to be connected in a delta structure because in a schematic, it can be drawn to represent the Greek letter delta, capital delta. Now this structure can sometimes be drawn slightly differently by expanding any one of these three and squaring them up like this and you still have the A terminal, the B terminal and the C terminal. And because this looks something like a Greek letter pi, sometimes this delta connection is also referred to as a pi connection. Now, three resistors that are connected with one of the terminals of each of the three resistors at a common point is said to be connected in a Y structure. Because, again, in a schematic, it can be drawn to look something like a Y. Here it looks upside down, but you get the idea of turning this around and it would look something like a Y. Now, you can flatten out these two branches and redraw it. And you see then that it can also look something like a T, and so less commonly this structure where you've got a common point for all three of the devices, less commonly this is referred to as a T connection. You'll notice that in neither of these structures do we see series or parallel connections that would allow us to reduce the structure to a single equivalent resistance. But it is possible to transform from one structure to the other and to have the two structures still be equivalent at the terminals. In other words, we can take a delta, we're going to see that we can take a delta connection and we can replace it with three resistors connected in a Y connection so that the terminals can't tell the difference between a delta connected or a Y connected um, set of devices. And similarly, we can go from a Y connection to a delta connection and still have the rest of the circuit unaffected. The rest of the circuit would act the same whether it was in the Y connected, connected or the delta connected load. So our task now is to derive the relationship between the delta connected resistances in the delta, we had R sub A, R sub B, and R sub C as the resistances. And find the relationship between those delta connected resistances and the Y connected resistances, R1, R2, and R3. But before we move on, let's just make a, be specific about the way we are naming these devices. In the delta, you've got a terminal that is not touching or you've got uh, each of these each of these resistors goes between two terminals and there's one terminal that's not touching it so here the a terminal is not touching this resistor in fact this a terminal is opposite across the delta from this resistor and so in our nomenclature we're going to refer to the resistor opposite a as r sub a the resistor opposite the b terminal so the resistor that's not touching the B terminal, we're going to call R sub B. And finally, the resistor that's not touching the C terminal, we're going to refer to as R sub C, or R sub C then again is across the delta structure from the C terminal. In the Y connected load, the resistor that is connected to the A terminal will be referred to as R1, the terminal connected to the B terminal is R2, and the terminal connected to the C terminal is R3. So our task then, is to derive expressions for R1, R2, and R3 in terms of R sub A, R sub B, and R sub C to take us from the delta connected load to the Y connected load. And then similarly, we want to come up with expressions for R sub A, R sub B, and R sub C in terms of the Y connected resistances R1, R2, and R3 that would allow us to transform the structure, the Y structure, to a delta structure. To accomplish this, we need to determine the resistance seen looking into each pair of terminals in both structures. In other words, there's a resistance from A to B that we see looking in 
on the delta structure, and there is also a resistance that we would see looking into A and B in the Y-connected structure. To understand that, we're going to leave the C terminal unconnected and look into the A, B terminals, and what do we see? Well, looking in here, you see R sub C is spanning the two terminals, but there is also a parallel connection consisting of R sub A and R sub B in series. So the resistance in this case from A to B is equal to the parallel combination of R sub C with the series connection RA plus RB. Or from A to B in the delta connected load, we have R sub C times R sub A plus R sub B divided by the sum R sub A plus R sub B plus R sub C. Similarly, looking between the B and C terminals, we have R sub A in parallel with the series combination of R sub B plus R sub C. And finally, the resistance seen looking between the A and the C terminals is R sub B in parallel with R sub A plus R sub C. So these three terms here are the resistances seen looking into the terminals of the delta connection. Now, over here in the Y connection, again, leaving the C terminal unconnected and looking between A and B, we have simply R1 in series with R2. Because this is not connected, there's no current going this way, and the current from A to B goes through those two. So between A and B on this terminal, we can call, again, we can call it RAB, in the Y connection is simply R1 plus R2. Similarly, between B and C, we have R2 plus R3, and between C and A, we have R1 plus R3. So our task, then, is to determine how we could replace a delta connection of resistors with a Y connection of resistors. And so what we need to do is we need to solve for R1, R2, and R3 in terms of the delta connected resistors R sub A, R sub B, and R sub, R sub A, R sub B, and R sub C. To get started, we're going to subtract R1 from both sides of this top equation and this bottom equation. So subtracting R1 from this equation and subtracting R1 from that side of the equation, we have then R sub C times, well, let's not read it. You can see what it is, minus R1. She subtracted R1 from the top equation and subtracted R1 from both sides of the third equation, which gives us then an R1 term on both of these. If we add those two equations together, we get this term plus this term minus 2R1 on the left-hand side. And adding both of these equations together on the right-hand side, we have R2 plus R3. Now, from the previous page, we have an expression for R2 plus R3. The second equation here tells us that R2 plus R3 is equal to this expression, which I've rewritten right here. R2 plus R3 is equal to that. So replacing R2 plus R3 with this expression right here, then, gives us this equation, where we have only the Y-connected resistor of R1 left in this expression. And now all that's left to do is to solve for R1. So let's add R1, or 2R1, to both sides, bringing it over here to the right-hand side of the equation, and subtract this term from both sides of the equation, giving us this on the left-hand side of the equation, equaling 2R1 on the right. Now going through and distributing each of these terms gives us then this equation. You'll notice we have RARC plus RBRC plus RARB plus RBRC minus RARB minus RARC. And you'll notice that this term has a corresponding negative term that add to zero. This term and this term have corresponding negative terms or add to zero. And we're left with then R sub BRC R sub B, R sub C, or 2R sub B, R C over this denominator term. So we can cancel 
the 2 on both sides, and we end up with then that R1, the resistance connected to the A terminal in the Y connected load, is equal to R sub B, R sub C over this sum. You'll notice that the denominator, oh, we can do a similar kind of uh, derivation to solve for R2 and R3. And notice the structure. Each of them has the same denominator, the sum of the three delta connected resistances, R sub A, R sub B, and R sub C. And then in the numerator, for R1, you got the product RB times RC. For R2, you have RA, RC, and for R3, you have RA times RB. These three equations, then, represent the way that you can determine the Y-connected values, R1, R2, and R3, from the delta-connected values of resistances, R sub A, R sub B, and R sub C. Now, you can go through a similar kind of analysis and come up with the corresponding equations that allow you to transfer or to transform from Y-connected to delta-connected. I've just rewritten the ones we just derived were there for R1, R2, and R3. And similarly, you can come up with the delta-connected values of resistances in terms of the Y-connected resistances. So these two transformations from delta to Y and from Y to delta will find come in handy, particularly in power th balance three-phase operations. But there's also some times when you've got a resistances that are neither in parallel nor series, but by transforming from either a delta connection to a Y or from a Y to a delta, you're then able to simplify the circuits further than what uh, we were allowed to, than what we could simplify using just parallel or series relationships.